With the clone stamp tool, you can hold Alt and click to set a sample source, then you can paint with those sampled pixels. But did you know that if you hold Alt and Shift in the bracket keys on the keyboard, you can scale the sample source. I'm currently tapping on the left bracket key to scale down, and when I paint, I get a scaled down version of the sampled pixels. And if you hold Alt Shift in the greater than or less than keys, you rotate the sample pixels. To reset, you can go into Window, Clone Source, then click on the Reset button. Make sure you watch this video to the end to learn over 19 powerful Photoshop keyboard shortcuts you probably don't know, and to learn more about the MSI desktop and monitor I'm currently using. In this next example, I have the small white circle selected. When you press Ctrl T to transform, click on this checkbox in the options bar to enable the reference point, then drag it to the center of the circle, and in the options bar, add 10 degrees in the rotation. That will rotate the circle 10 degrees from the center of the larger circle. You can then press Control alt shift t to repeat the last transformation and place it in a new layer. In other words, Photoshop rotates the new circle 10 degrees from the previous location and it places it in a new layer. You can press Control alt in the number 2 to load the luminosity of your image as a selection. You can then create an adjustment layer like the Curves Adjustment layer. And notice how I'm only targeting the brightest pixels of the image. You can adjust the range of the selected pixels by going into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and drag the black point to the right. To decrease the amount of selected pixels, you can see the result here in the layer thumbnail and drag the white point to the left to make the brighter pixels of the layer mask brighter, intensifying the effect in the selected pixels. When I press OK and continue adjusting the covers adjustment layer, you can see how I'm now only targeting the brightest highlights in the image. To do the opposite, press Ctrl I to invert the layer mask and now you're only targeting the shadows. When you go into Filter and Liquify, you'll enter this workspace where you can use the For Warp tool to push and pull pixels. You probably already know about the Reconstruct button. It allows you to reduce the global intensity of the pixels you adjusted. But if you hold Alt, you will only reconstruct the pixels that you paint over. Currently, I'm on this pixel layer. If you press Alt and Backspace, you'll fill with the foreground color, which is currently black. And if you press Control and Backspace, you'll fill with the background color, which is currently white. But did you know that if you add the shift key to that keyboard combination, you'll only fill the opaque pixels. Alt, shift and backspace will fill only the opaque pixels and not the transparent pixels. If you're on a text layer, you do not need to hold the shift key. Alt and backspace will fill the text layer with the foreground color, leaving the transparent pixels intact. And the same thing is true with a vector layer. No need to hold shift, hold control and backspace to fill the vector layer with the background color. In this document, I have a background layer and a foreground layer. With my foreground layer selected, I'm gonna go into Edit, Puppet Warp, which will allow me to place pins over my image. Then I can click and drag on the pins to reposition her body. But with a pin selected, you can hold Alt to reveal the circle overlay and drag to rotate it to give you more control over your distortions. With the brush tool active, you can click on this drop down from the options bar to reveal the brush presets. From here, you can open a group by clicking on it. But if you hold control and click on the arrow, Photoshop will open all the folders in this preset list. To close all the folders, hold control and click on the arrow. As you can see, Photoshop will close all those automatically. If you have only just a few groups open, you can simply hold control and click on one of the open groups to close all the other groups. This is the brush I currently have active. To cycle to the next brush in the list, I can tap on the greater than key, which is the same key as the period. And to go back up the list, I can tap on the less than key, which is the same key as the comma. In this next example, I'll use this brush. You can rotate your brush clockwise by tapping on the right arrow key, and you can rotate it counterclockwise by tapping on the left arrow key. You can do the same thing by typing a number in this input box on the options bar, but using the keyboard shortcut, of course, is much easier and faster. If you hold the shift key, and tap on the arrow keys, you'll rotate by 15 degree increments. When you paint, sometimes you may need to erase. Using the eraser tool usually won't give you good results because you're using a different brush. For better results, try erasing with the same brush you're painting with. To do so, you don't have to go into the eraser tool, simply stay on the brush tool and hold the tilde key on the keyboard and paint 
to erase with the same brush you currently have active. The tilde key is in the top left of the keyboard below the escape key on North American keyboards. If you're working with an older version of Photoshop and you don't have access to that new keyboard shortcut, you can go into the blending mode dropdown and select clear and that will give you the same result. Also, there's a keyboard shortcut you can use. If you hold Alt, Shift, and R, the blending mode will switch over to clear and you can erase. Or you can hold Shift and tap on the plus key to go down the blending mode list, or the Shift and minus key to go up the blending mode list. With a text layer and the type tool active, you can click in between two characters, hold Alt and tap on the left arrow key to decrease the kerning, which is the spacing in between two characters, and you can tap on the right arrow key to increase the spacing. Before we continue with the next keyboard shortcut, I would love to talk to you about the desktop and monitor I currently use. The MSI Aegis RS desktop and the MSI Optics monitor. The Aegis RS is a powerful computer built to last with easy upgradability. It comes with an Intel i9 processor, 10 gigabyte Nvidia GeForce RTX 380 video card, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Everything you need to run Photoshop and all creative applications, it's all I use in my professional work. The monitor I'm using is the MSI Optics, a 4K monitor designed to produce high quality resolution images with vivid colors and smooth motions. Also, if you're into gaming, the fast response rate will give you fantastic graphics while playing. I highly recommend you check out these devices, the link is below in the description. With the move tool active, you can hover over a layer, hold control to see the bounding box, hover outside of the layer, and you'll see the labels for the distance between the edge of the layer and the edge of the canvas. You can press control R to enable the rulers. Then you can drag from the rulers to create guides. If you hold Alt and click on a vertical guide, Photoshop will turn that into a horizontal guide. And if you do the same thing on a horizontal guide, Photoshop will flip it into a vertical guide. You can also hold Alt and Shift and click on multiple guides to select them. And while holding down on those keys, you can click and drag to move multiple guides at the same time. You can also hold Alt, Shift and double click on a guide to bring up the Edit Selected Guides dialog box. From here, you can select the color. I'll make this one light red and set a position. You can use pixels, but even better, you can use a percentage. So I can type 75% and press OK and Photoshop will place this guide 75% from the edge. 100% will of course be on the right edge of the canvas. Let me show you how that intersect shortcut can be very useful when making selections. I'll start by enabling the elliptical marquee tool. I'll hold shift, click and drag to create a perfect circle and I can use the space bar to move my selection as I create it. I'm trying to match the iris as best as possible. With the selection active, I can now hold Alt and Shift. Notice the X icon on my cursor. That indicates that I'm now intersecting the selection and I can click and drag to create a circle. And what I'm looking to do is select the top edge of the eye. Again, I can hold the space bar and move the selection as I create it, and I'm just going to place it into position. And when I release, the selected pixels will only be those that were inside of my second selection. Sometimes you may need to freehand a selection by using the lasso tool. You can simply drag over your image to make a selection. But if you reach an area where the polygonal lasso tool will be best, you can temporarily switch to it by holding Alt, and then you can continue selecting with the polygonal lasso tool. The polygonal lasso tool allows you to make selections by defining straight edges as you click. If you need to go back into the lasso tool, simply click, hold down the mouse button and release the Alt key and you'll be back with the lasso tool and you can continue freehanding your selection. If you're ever working in Photoshop and you feel that you need to start again from scratch, you don't have to undo. Instead, you can press the F12 key on the keyboard, which will either revert the image back to the last time you saved or how it looked when you first opened it. If you have multiple documents open, you can press Control Alt P to close all but the currently open document. In Photoshop, you can select the layer by clicking on it and you can drag it down the layer stack or up the layer stack. But using keyboard shortcuts is faster and more efficient. If you hold Alt and tap on the left bracket key, you'll activate the layer below the currently active layer. The right bracket key will activate the layer above. And if you add the shift key to this shortcut, 
Photoshop will add to the active selections. For example, tapping on the left bracket key while holding Alt and Shift will add the layer below to the currently active layers. To move a layer up in the layer stack, hold Control and tap on the right bracket key. And to move it down in the layer stack, hold Control and tap on the left bracket key. And if you hold Control, Shift, and tap on the right bracket key, Photoshop will place the layer on top of the layer stack. However, if the layer is inside of a group, it will be placed on top of the stack in the group. Holding Control, Shift, and the left bracket key will move the layer down the group. Pressing the same keyboard shortcut again will place it all the way at the bottom of the layer stack. If a layer is not in the group, holding Control, Shift, and the right bracket key will place it on top of the layer stack. Also, when you have a layer active and not a painting tool active, you can tap any of the number keys to switch the opacity of the layer. For example, if you press 5, you'll switch over to 50% opacity, 8 to 80% opacity, and 0 for 100% opacity. When you quickly tap two keys at the same time, Photoshop will apply that number value. For example, 36 will give you 36, 94 will give you 94, and 00, 0 will give you 0%. Pressing 0 again will bring it up to 100%. If you add the shift key to that and you hold shift and six, that will change the fill to 60% and the same rule applies. Typing two numbers will give you that number as a percentage. For example, five, seven will give you 57. And if you want to cycle between blending modes, hold the shift key and tap on the plus key to go down the list or hold shift and tap on the minus key to go up the list. Keep in mind that if you have a painting tool active, these keyboard shortcuts will affect the blending mode, opacity and fill of the tool and not the layer.